how to back up photos and never lose them again. The steps you need to take. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. But at the end of this video, if this was helpful at all, please do hit that like button. It really does help everyone out on YouTube find the answers that they're looking for when they're searching what is essentially the world's second largest search engine. So do you back up your photos and videos? I kind of hope you do. It's one of those things that I talk about so, so much, but it's also something that I talk about so much because so many people actually don't, especially when it comes to their mobile devices. This is one of those things where we've all now got cameras with us 24 seven. We're taking pictures and videos at a rate like never before. And yet, if you were to lose your camera, if you were to lose your mobile phone, if you were to lose your smartphone with a camera built in, would you lose all the pictures you had? Let's look at some of the ways that you should think about backing up the photos you're taking, be it on a phone or camera. So 10 years ago, as it turns out, I went on a trip to Australia and New Zealand, had a wonderful time. But one of the things I realized before I left is that the photos I would take would be irreplaceable. In other words, everything else could be replaced. My clothes, my suitcase, my bags, even the camera itself could all be replaced. But the photos that I would have taken, if they had been lost, they would be lost forever. There was no way I was going to be able to recreate them. Here's the approach that I took, and we'll talk about some lessons out of that approach that might apply to you. What I did is throughout the day, of course, I took my pictures. I took them, they were stored on a memory card in my digital camera. And like I said, throughout the day, took lots and lots of pictures. At the end of the day, I did two things. One is I first copied all of those photos from the camera's memory card to the laptop PC I was carrying with me at the time as well. I didn't delete them from the memory card. I copied them. Right there is a backup. I've got two copies of those photos. I could lose the SD card or I could lose the laptop, but as long as I didn't lose both, I would still have my photos. Now, even that wasn't enough. These photos are too important. On this trip, I did take a backup drive and I was in fact backing up my laptop every night. So there's a third copy of those photos. Now, one of the things that I realized is that a lot can happen. You really don't want to lose all your possessions on a trip, but worst case, it could happen. Even though I took care to, for example, travel with the laptop and its backup drive separately, one was in checked luggage, the other one was in the cabin with me. Still, there was the possibility I could lose both. So what I ended up doing is about every two or three days, I would actually take that memory card that I had not deleted any photos from, stick it in an envelope and mail it to myself. I mailed it back home. When I got home, of course, I had a stack of mail from myself with all these memory cards. Had I lost my laptop and my phone and my backup, I still would have had all of my pictures. Now, none of that happened, right? I came back, the camera was fine, the backup was fine, the laptop was fine, and of course I had all these backup uh, memory cards, but it all worked. But my success wasn't guaranteed. People lose things all the time, especially when they're traveling. This was so important that I took extraordinary measures to back up what I was doing. Now, here's what you can take away from this and my suggestion when it comes to your digital cameras specifically. When you take a picture, that picture exists only on the memory card in that camera. As soon as is practical, copy, don't move, but copy that photo to your PC or your laptop or some other device. Then, naturally you are backing up that PC or laptop. So right there, you now have two levels of backup for your photos.
You might consider also involving cloud storage in this. Now, all of my photos are stored not only on my PCs, but in Dropbox as well. So even if I were to lose all of my hardware, I would still have all of my photos in the cloud. That's something you can consider, but it's not until you've got those at least two other copies on your PC and on your PC's backup that I would feel safe deleting the photos from the memory card you use in your camera. That's a quick way, an easy way, a safe way to make sure that the photos you take with your digital camera are never lost. Now, if you've got a smartphone, things actually get a little bit easier. Photos taken with your smartphone are, of course, just like any other digital photo. They are files on the smartphone's memory card, but there are applications running on your smartphone as well. One of the things that I strongly recommend you do is, in fact, install a utility like Dropbox or Google Drive or OneDrive on your phone. One of the things that those applications will actually ask you is whether or not you want them to automatically back up your photos and your videos to the cloud. Say yes. It's worth the extra bandwidth to even say yes to do it all the time. Don't worry about how big these files are. I want them backed up. That way, within moments of taking a photo, as long as you've got an internet connection to your phone, your photos get backed up. It's even better because, for example, in my case, when I take a photo with my phone, it gets backed up to Dropbox and then immediately gets downloaded to all the other computers on which I have Dropbox installed. Instant backup, multiple copies in multiple places. So I do strongly recommend you enable at least one of those apps. Now, I will caution you that if you install more than one of these apps, for example, I have Google and OneDrive and Dropbox and others on my phone, they will each ask you to back up your photos for you automatically. And the default action, of course, is to say yes. So you could end up with all of these services trying to back up your photos simultaneously. You don't need to do that. Pick one, let it do the work, and politely decline the offer from all of the other applications installed on your device. As I said earlier, once you've got them, make sure they're backed up into the cloud automatically using your mobile device, or if you're using a digital camera and you've just copied your photos to your hard disk on a PC or laptop, it's probably not a bad idea to have that Dropbox or that OneDrive or that Google Drive available so that they'll automatically get uploaded to the cloud. That is one of the ways to protect yourself from theft, from fire, from all sorts of other kinds of loss and damage. The problem, of course, is photos are irreplaceable, as I started out by saying. And that's something that is worth a little bit of extra time, a little bit of extra effort. And of course, make sure that you're backing up your PC. Your PC should be getting backed up regularly, be it to an external drive or your data files to a cloud or something. But make sure that included in your PC's regular or scheduled backup are the files and folders that are your most recent and most precious photos. Now, I do have to point out something specific about what I will just refer to as sensitive photos. Make of that what you will. When the article on which this video was based was originally written, there was a news break where the accounts of several celebrities had been hacked into. And as a result, what one might consider to be sensitive photos, private photos for those celebrities, were then all of a sudden made public. That's a choice you get to make. There's a not saying that you shouldn't take sensitive photos. That's a decision you can make. But you do need to be aware that if you are automatically uploading things to the cloud, or if you are doing a reasonable job of backing things up, you are also making copies of those photos that you may not necessarily want in all those different places. In other words, simply think about it. Use some common sense and decide whether or not the photos should be taken, whether or not they should be taken along with your regular family photos, and whether or not, or specifically how, 
those photos should be backed up so that your privacy is fully protected. For links and updates on this article, for comments and more, visit askleo.com 16005. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching. <music>